Only 100 years ago, much of the Canadian Northwest stood like this, primeval and majestic. There was world enough then, and there was more time than there is now. But the challenges were enormous, and only the very strongest survived in this hardy country. To film a story of 125 men facing those odds, fighting the elements, the loneliness, and their enemies, a movie company has come to British Columbia to start from scratch, as they did, to build the mining town of Presbyterian Church. They began by clearing acres of wilderness, using much of the cut timber for the construction of primitive houses and for the church itself. Then as the town rises and the filming follows along, the buildings, as ramshackle as they look, will become homes for many of the crew on the picture. They are being made as complete structures so that they are habitable and weatherproof and used for shooting scenes indoors as well as out for the new motion picture called McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Not many engines run after they're almost 100 years old, but this original case steam tractor does. In the old days, it was used to haul logs to the rivers and was a major attraction and wonder to the simple folk of the backwoods whenever it rolled into a town. It was discovered being sold at a country auction in Calgary by production designer Leon Erickson. So the movie company bought it and brought it here for a role in the picture. Now, part of the cargo it hauls into Presbyterian Church is the town's newest female, a part played by Julie Christie. She and Warren Beatty co-star in the movie. Joe McCabe. Mrs. Miller, come from Bearport to see you. Guiding the film is Robert Altman, who has established himself as an exceptional director. In this picture, he needs a crude and uncomfortable setting to film this first meeting between a tough businesswoman and her new partner. Well, tell me, any news from down Bearport? It's been a while since I've been here. <laughs> How many men are there around here? Well, this here's an interesting town. There's uh, going to be upwards of 100, 125 men. More long. The recreation of details that go into a venture like this include replicas of irreplaceable machinery and mining equipment duplicated to work better than they did 100 years ago. The log and frame buildings are exact down to the use of wooden pegs and grooved fittings. Nails weren't easy to come by in the Northwest. Most of the men in town work in zinc mines. Mine shafts are dug out by the crews and zinc tailings are trucked in and scattered around the shafts for realistic effect. Overall, Presbyterian Church is complete and self-sustaining as a community. One crew member is Paul Neenover. He lives on the set in a shack and tells how it's been for him since the first day. Well, I first built my house and then built with furniture and got everything situated. And little by little, I built it up and it's in me. And it's just uh, it's so good to live here. It's so peaceful. Nobody bothers you in the evenings and everything, and I enjoy working. This locale is supposedly one of the driest in the Canadian Northwest. Normally, there is two inches of rain every couple of months. The company measures four inches alone in the first month and shoots most of the bad weather sequences at one time. Knowing the weather forecast is an important part in determining the daily shooting schedule. The man who is most concerned with the schedule and the entire project running smoothly is David Foster, who co-produced the film with Mitchell Brower. Foster must coordinate all phases while the movie is made on location. He puts the complete responsibility for the look of the film in the hands of production designer Leon Erickson, 
who works to create an environment for the director and actors to film in. The earthy and rowdy quarters where the miners lived, drank, and gambled. One of the episodes in the film takes place in Presbyterian Church's only saloon. McCabe, portrayed by Warren Beatty, is new in town, and being an opportunist, chooses this place to begin his gambling operations. I'm Patrick Sheehan. This is my place. Shouldn't we make a deal? Uh, well, uh, how much a bottle? Three dollars. Three dollars. Yesterday was two dollars. Tell you what, you give these boys a two dollar bottle on me, and then I'll stand my own losses, and uh, you can make your profit on the whiskey. Well, listen, you boys don't know nothing about me, and I don't know nothing about you, so what do you say we make this a uh, nickel game, huh? To start off with. Sitting up here in the wilds of Canada for months on end is not really Julie Christie's style. This is truly a man's country, but it's where they have to make the picture and she understands the lack of certain conveniences. It's also the first time she's made this kind of rugged adventure film or worked on a location like this. In fact, her situation closely parallels her role in the film as Mrs. Miller. She's come from a long way off. She's unsettled away from what's familiar, and she's the prettiest attraction in a womanless community. You're the best looking woman I ever saw. And I ain't never tried to do nothing but put a smile on your face. I don't know what it is. I guess I ain't never been this close to nobody before. You don't need to say nothing. The church is nearing completion, according to the script. In the story, the eccentric parson zealously dedicates himself to single-handedly construct the building. It will play an important part in the drama of the movie. It's getting on toward fall now, and the company still has much shooting to do before the snows come to Canada. The men are making the most of their free time when not behind the cameras, looking for activities to occupy themselves. Presbyterian Church, with its atmosphere of a regular community, has an addition, a working corn whiskey still, just as the old timers did for their own enjoyment. With the snow comes colder weather, and just as a hundred years ago, most of the houses and saloons were unheated. Designer Erickson does something about that. Yeah, well, the stove was simply a device to keep the, a room of that uh, magnitude warm. So I went to a machinery company just looking for a shape. Uh, then I saw this ball mill, which was a metal drum of the, uh, of the proper proportion that looked as if it would keep a building that size warm. It does get red hot when you really stoke it up. But the bar in McCabe's was uh, hand-hewn, chiseled by hand. He uh, carved out these posts and the... Uh, the regular studio carpenters uh, constructed the remainder of the bar. Robert Altman is ready to film one of the dramatic events in the movie. Presbyterian Church has developed into a flourishing town, and McCabe the richest man. Outsiders menace his operations, and he has to face them alone. During the filming of this climactic sequence, every building will be used. It is director Altman's and designer Erickson's painstaking care that makes the scene pay off. This is how they're shooting, McCabe and Mrs. Miller in Canada. This is the house of God. Uh, well, I'm going right now. I uh, got to have my gun. I'm, I'm in out there trying to kill me. Get out. <laughs> 